Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Excited to have the founder and creator of Nobelia.org. Yeah, we're talking about the way of impeccability and mornest project life change programs. He's also an author and poet, does so much. Still, Sebastian, how are you today? I am most well, really, really. I am most well. I'm, I'm just excited to be here. And, you know, I, I was sharing with some friends earlier and they're excited for me to be here and, you know, Lots of support for this. So I'm very excited, very happy to be here. Oh, great. Well, tell us a little bit about <laughs> no, uh, Novelia is. What is this all about this world of awareness and understanding? Exactly. Exactly. Sorry, I'm excited. I don't mean to interrupt you there. You were going to say no, more. No, I want to know what Nobelia is specifically. Ah, tell right. us. And by the way, right, the so, website, nobelia.org, N-O-B-E-L-I-A.org. Tell us yes, about uh, the yes, self-discovery yes. project. Thank you for spelling it because sometimes when I say Nobelia, like, uh, and, and people hear it with an I, but it's an E, N-O-B-E-L-I-A. So Nobelia, yes. It comes from noble, nobleness. So Nobelia is... Uh, it's the home of, and uh, it's a long story, but to, <laughs> to get there really short, Nobelia is a representation of mourners. And Nobelia is the home of a culture, a culture of mourners. Now, what do I mean by mourners? I mean a culture that revolves around learning and growing, around where you want to be able to be your most, your mourners. And I don't mean it in a typical success point of view. When we say this, people think, oh, this means being famous or wealthy. No, not at all. It means developing your inner sense of who you are so that you can be able to be who you really want to be. In other words, to, to develop your qualities, such as simple things like your inner integrity, yeah. being able to be honest all the time. Yes, I mean, this is huge. Yes, it's a big deal. It's well, massive. I think it's amazing, but I also need to find out the man behind all of this. So I oh, need to get oh, to know you. you. Please, please. Uh, really, you. we all need right. to, to get more about you. I want to find oh, out first in, and in foremost. A moment. More. I want to add a little bit more about Nobelia. Oh, sure. The Go ahead. culture of Nobelia, why it's called Nobelia, is because it also revolves around nobleness. Ooh. Now, I say nobleness rather than noble or be noble mm -hmm. because the word noble, sadly, is very corrupted because of our history, right? When yeah. we think of nobility, we think of historic nobility, which is based on hereditary, and mm -hmm. basically they were the very opposite of nobility, unfortunately, right? But on nobilia, this concept of actually being noble, nobleness, right? This is what the culture there revolves around, right? So it's an entirely different culture beside, obviously, uh, the self-improvement point of view, personal development point of view. You have to have that if you're going to aspire to be noble. You, you have to get all your P's and Q's sorted of that. You can't be snarky or uh, mean or sarcastic or jealous or any nonsense like that if you aspire to being noble, truly being noble. So this is what I mean by mourners, right? Going to that extra level, extra step, taking it all the way. And the key, the key, part of Nobilia called Nobilia Living, just for a way of understanding it, is to live in such a way where we are engaged in collaboration and cooperation, not competition. Why? Because the entire paradigm of Nobilia Living is entirely different. Our paradigm that we exist in here today is mm. the superiority paradigm. This is what it's all about hierarchy, looking how high you can get on whatever picking order list that you're possibly in. And, you know, it's always about how we relate and compare to others. Am I better? Am I worse? It's always this hierarchy and dominance and we get all of the problems that come from dominance. And, you know, the issues such as, you know, abuse, manipulation, narcissism, especially all, they're all encouraged by the superiority paradigm, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. The horrible thing. So nobilia living is an alternative paradigm to the superiority paradigm. And uh, I, not as the only one. I'm not saying it's either or. No, it's simply saying superiority paradigm. I uh, don't want it. Something else, right? We can, once we realize that, uh, that there is an alternative, that means there can be other. Yeah? You don't have to have this particular one. Yeah. I particularly like it a lot, but 
that's me. I'm biased. <laughs> this is what Nobilia is all about, right? So Nobilia represents, it's a world. I mean, it, it's part of a long, big book series. But in, in a metaphorical sense, and in our day-to-day, -day, it's a world. And that's what it's representing, you know, in a, in a figurative sense, in a metaphoric sense, Nobilia is a world, a world of an alternative paradigm, a world we can live in right here. Now, in this world, we can live and apply Nobilia living, which I'm going to share with you, because it seems to me that if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, and, and I say hearing, it's capital H hearing, Nobilia hearing, and I'll elaborate on that a little bit later. I'm hearing you. Jill, if I'm hearing you, this interests you personally, not just yeah. from an interview point of view, yes? Mm -hmm, for sure. <laughs> I'm, I, 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 it's important, you know, because for me, I, I said to Jason, the producer, I said, when I uh, do interviews, I somewhat interview the interviewer a little bit as well. That's fine. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> right. I like find, I don't, how did you get here? I mean, what you're doing is fascinating. Hold on. I just have to point this out because it's part of my job to make sure people get to know you. And I know we're talking about breaking free from the should, Thank the what, you. the limitations, and how yeah. to start living deliberately like us and this go. paradigm Thank change. You. We're going to get go. to this. But there you... you go. Go. You just said something super I, huge. And I thank did. you. We'll get back to it later, but thank you for saying that. <laughs> thank you. That's a huge, huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. That's how I got to be here. So it answers your question also. You actually answered your own question, which I love. Right? I got to be here because of deliberate living. That's how I got to be here. At the age wow. of 10, this all started, though. Where did you grow exactly, up, by the way? Exactly. All right. So I, I'll tell you that, that little story there. So when, when I was in that age, I used to have uh, strips of rubber cut from inner tubes for car tires. Now, all right, today cars don't have inner tubes, but back in the day they were. And it's rubber, right? So I cut them in strips, I don't know, about a foot and a half long. And I'd wrap it around my finger and I'd shoot stuff with this strip of, of rubber, right? It was wonderful. I'd just shoot everything. I got to be really, really accurate. I mean, I could. I could shoot a fly anywhere, mosquito, whatever. Shoot the ash off your cigarette, whatever. So uh, there was a, a bulb hanging in our passageway, and there was this fly sitting on the bulb, right? a light bulb. Didn't have a lampshade on, which is rather unusual, actually. So I shot at the fly, and I, I missed. And I was deadly. I never missed ever. <laughs> and I missed just ever so slightly. I got the fly, of course, but I also yeah. hit the light bulb. And the light bulb literally exploded, right? So I, I'm like a little bit disconcerted and and my mother comes up and she sees me a bit upset and she thinks I'm upset because I I shattered the light bulb but I was upset because I'd missed so she misunderstood so I, I, I kind of explained to her and wow. she says well, <laughs> and she says well we can't all be perfect or we can't no she didn't say all she said she said uh she said we can't be perfect and and I it stopped me and, 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 you know, at 10 years old, I'm like, but why not? Why can't we be perfect? Yes. And, and so I went to my room and I, I, I thought about this. It was kind of my habit already. I really thought it through. So I'm like, well, what does perfect mean? Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, I had this a propensity or this inclination or whatever you want to call it to thinking things through to the end. It was Amazing. always important to me. Now, I personally feel it's a kind of a carryover. I don't know how it comes about. Truly, don't ask me. I can't explain why. <laughs> but I thought it through to the end. So in yeah. this thinking it through to the end, I said, well, first of all, I have to understand what perfection means. What does it actually mean? So I, I did a study. Yes, I know. Okay, it's a little weird. I, I, I like did a research study, like a psychology research study. I went out and I asked people. I queried them. What does, what does uh, um, perfection mean to you? <laughs> now, this sounds like a simple study, but it's a very conservative society that I was in. And, uh, you know, a lot of the people said, well, perfection, that's meaningless, it's nonsense, you can't have it. And, and, and some of them would say, I, I got this very often, actually. They said, oh, perfection would be very yeah. boring. And in my, in my, my innocence at the time and my lack of sophistication, and I hadn't yet learned Nobilia diplomacy, I said, uh, did you realize what you just said? And I remember one older boy 
the moment he said, oh, yeah, but perfection, that's just boring. I said, really? Just think about that. What did you just say? And he realized what he said was oxymoronic. It was self-contradictory. It didn't make any sense. If, if it was boring, it wouldn't be perfect. Yeah. And the moment he clicked that he just, you know, basically, you know, said something stupid, uh, then the next moment I saw his face change. And that's the moment I ran away. <laughs> because I was about to get a smack. <laughs> so, you know, it was quite fascinating to me how this understanding of perfection it was oxymoronic. It didn't make any sense whatsoever. So I thought it through to the end and I came up with my first act of philosophizing, which was my definition of perfection, which is mm. perfection is a state of being from mm. which if you had the power to change Anything at all, you would not. Yeah. So this Beautiful. is it. This is perfection. Yeah. This is perfection. You are, oh my goodness, you're on fire. Well, Thank we you. also just want to remind people how we can contact you. Uh, tell us again the website, nobelia.org. I'll spell that for them. N O B E L I A dot org. But I know you also have a great uh, Facebook page. Uh, could you yes. share a little bit about yes. that too? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. So you can, you can find on Nobelia right there with the pages mm -hmm. you can click on connect it's just or you can go slash connect and you'll find all this info that i'm going to share now right. and on uh to connect with me yes you can just look up soul sebastian and it's it's sebastian with three a's okay it's actually quite significant yes oh it, tell us yes yeah. i've never met a sebastian like you with three a's so precisely but you know this is the magic of my life right uh when i at that age uh Sebastian is my middle name, right? Mm -hmm. I don't really care much for my first and last and still as a nickname, just so everybody knows. I, I'm not hiding anything ever. Just the way of how things come out via attunement. But Sebastian back then was spelled S-E and T-I-O-N. It's also somewhat unusual, but I never liked it. And when I was uh, in my late teens, I changed it to Sebastian with an A and okay. the A at the end, the three A's. No idea at the time other than, well, it's kind of a long story to it, but it was something I did. And I, I, I put it on my driver's license and it became, now it's actually retroactively. It's, I got a birth certificate recently. I got a copy and it's got Sebastian spelled this way, my oh, way, wow. not the way my parents spelled it. Yeah. Anyway, but the significance is that what's behind me is the A plus philosophy way of impeccability and we'll get into it in later episodes i'll go into detail but that's the background behind me and the three core a's of this are appropriateness attunement and awareness All right so my name has that in it just from the way the magic of the world how things work out this is my life this is my life right and that so uh, to finish my story about perfection once i'd figured out this that perfection is something we define. It's personally defined as perfection, and therefore it's attainable. If I'm in a situation where I don't want to change anything, well, that's perfect for me, right? And, you know, when, when I play golf, I, I make at least 18 perfect strokes. Any golfer's going to say, no, come on, seriously, really. Every time you make a putt and you put it in the hole, it's perfect. Yeah. This is what you're trying to do, right? The objective, you achieve it. It's, if it's in the hole, it's perfect, right? <laughs> so perfection is, is a variable, and I like that. And it's something that requires some discernment to comprehend. Mm -hmm. Discernment is a very big deal. And, of course, it's practical. This is the point for me, that I wanted that practicality. So in that defining of what perfection is, I, at that time, said, this is what I want to do. I want to get to a state of being that mm -hmm. I feel is perfect for me. All right now, if you're thinking things through to the end, that's why it's always if I write that, that to the end is all caps, right? Got to be really emphasized because it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Then I said, well, what would I need to get to my idea of what things would be perfect for me? I would need to have awareness. This is what I said, right? I need to know what it means because I wasn't aware of really yeah. what perfection was. So then I started my path of acquiring awareness, yes? And this is a practical issue because the first thing when I started to think about awareness, I said, well, what is awareness itself? And then I, just to cut a long story short, 
the the consequence of that thought yeah. was horror, was absolute horror when wow. I became acutely aware of how unaware mm-hmm. I was. Right now, this was this was really quite a big deal to realize how unaware we are. It's very scary, especially if you in a uh, it was a very conservative society, and uh, you know. Of course, superiority paradigm very prominent. So bullying is a very big issue. Yeah. Now, most kids are aware of bullying, but if you become aware of awareness and you're paying attention to your entire surroundings, you become acutely aware of things like that. And you become acutely aware of how vulnerable you are and how unprepared you are. Right? So this was like not only that, but we got canings at school at that time, right? So if you forgot something, like the classic thing was our... Uh, we call them PT shorts, physical training. I think gym, gym shorts, right? If you didn't take your gym shorts, you get a caning for that. If you forgot your gym shorts at home, you know how often this happened? <laughs> All the time, right? Tell us, All yeah. <laughs> it was like, I, I never got a caning for it because when I, I did forget sometimes, but then I'd always remember when I got to school and I'd find somebody else and I'd borrow theirs, you know, from a different class who had it at a different time and got me out of trouble, right? So this was. But I was horrified that yeah. I could forget something like that. And it wasn't a memory issue. It was an awareness issue. And I was aware of this, right? So this was like, I mean, there are many other instances. And I managed to stay out of trouble because of this. I never got canines, well, only twice, but still, uh, you know, because of staying out of trouble, because of awareness. But the, the, the horror of it to realize just how fragile your existence was because of lack of awareness and that started me on the whole part so when you take this all the way through to the end what does it mean to live in awareness and to be deliberately aware like you said deliberate living right so all of the resultant behind me is from that moment on this was my entire life every wow. single second was geared towards this i want wow. to add one more point to this wow <laughs> yes, <laughs> I realize, you know, when I share this, I'm like, it sounds a little bit kind of out there. But, you know, we live in private realities that we don't always share with others. And what goes on inside of us is, is a very big deal. Now, I have two points that are very important here. When I was six years old, I had a very particular incident. I call it the bathroom incident. Now, <laughs> when I say the bathroom incident, it sounds like, you know, you, you messed in your pants or something. No, I, I went into the, well, we didn't call them bathrooms then. We called them toilets in where we were. Just bathrooms is the American word. But anyway, so I went into the bathroom that, at school, right? And a, an older boy, a much older boy, that school actually was interesting in that it was all the grades, right? So I was in first grade and this boy in like my 10, 11th, maybe 12th grade, he was bullying another first grader. And like, you know, it was really not physically hurting him. We were just basically giving him a hard time. And and, and the boy was kind of in tears a little bit. And then another older boy came in, right, Uh, in in, in 12th grade. And he said to the bullying boy, like, seriously, what are you doing bullying a first grader? Like, you know, how lame are you? Yeah. And Anyway, so the bully leaves, right, kind of put – and he didn't, he just said it to him like that. He was very sophisticated, this boy. It was really unusual. Was, that was like in a super conservative society, right? uh, the town before I got to the other one. Anyway, so then he says to the two of us, like, you guys should know better. What are you doing here on your own? Yeah, it's not, it's not, he didn't use the word appropriate, but he said, you know, come on, think about it. Don't be out here on your own. And and then I realized that you were saying, in my mind, I said, you know, be appropriate. And also, he said, he, he made a point about behaving, behaving in the way that is right for the school, yeah? to take school into account. And, and from that, my takeaway from that, when I thought that through, I, I said, well, I basically need to have a public self and a private self. And from that day on, I had public self and other private self. Because the things that you could do at school, this was like really so that that particular because I moved from the uh, yeah uh, that particular society was one step away from being Amish. They just didn't wear the uniforms. Wow. And they used technology, but that was it, right? 
uh, so super conservative society. So you have to really, really be careful about what you can mm-hmm. say. So I had the public self and the private self. And I want to say that private self was never secret. Nobody just ever asked. If you'd asked, I would have told you. So I had this inner life, which I would have been happy to share, but nobody, I never had anybody to share with it. But also, in a way, it helped me because in my ignorance and not sharing this, I had no limitations on what I could do. Yeah? Wow. In, in other I words, love it. And that's what you're helping people do too. <laughs> no exactly. limitations guiding them down this journey and we unfortunately exactly. only have three minutes left in the show it goes so quick i just want to make really? sure we're covering everything still yes yes wow wow <laughs> what, what else do you think is important to share hopefully we're going to talk again so we'll have more time to oh, break down yeah, we've got 10 more shows to do so well nine oh my more my goodness this is great yeah. okay good 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 so, yeah. so let's we, sum we up then the for full, today the yeah Say again? Sorry, say again, Joe? No, no. So what do you want to sum up for today, if you oh. don't mind? I just want to ask you, how do you feel about nobilia living? How important is mourners to you and deliberate living to you in your personal life? I'm always curious to ask. So much. I am a mom, a single mom of a, a seven and nine-year-old, right? And um. I believe in honesty. I believe in truth. I'm trying to teach my children to be more aware, more self-sufficient, yeah. start working early, be kind, um, and always do to others as you would have done to you. A simple basics. You know, we go to church yeah. every Sunday. Their religion yeah. doesn't mean they're, 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 trust me, they're seven and nine. They talk back, they oh, yeah. do the wrong oh, yeah. thing. We all make mistakes, but I'm trying to teach them oh, yeah. the value of everything and i want them to live this amazing best life ever right because as we get wiser and mature we now i only wish i knew then what i knew now right we all say that so yes so i'm going to share oh god sorry sorry let me interrupt you so watching the time there i just want to say next week i'm going to share a way of impeccability great from the perspective of how it applies to children Beautiful. And, and hold on, your book. We have to tell everyone about your book, Making Sense of Toxic Abusive People, right? Yes. So we can get this yes. on Amazon. Yes. Uh, there's it's so much more, still. I can't wait to yeah. talk yeah. to you. I, I'm, I'm releasing new books about to come this week, actually. Uh, one is this week Yay. and one probably next week called Ask Biella, and it's all about what we're talking about. Oh. Uh, so that, that book is about the superiority paradigm. Beautiful. So this, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Sil Sebastian, go to nobelia.org, N-O-B-E-L-I-A.org. And he's really helping so many as an author, a poet, life changer program through this. You need to talk to him. Uh, I'm I'm excited to know there's more books. Can't wait to talk next time, Sil. Thank you so much. There's always more. When it comes to me, there's always more. Let me just say it now already. (laughs) <laughs> I love your energy. Thank you for sharing this with us and uplifting all of us today. You have a fantastic day. Thanks so much. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on streamer.com and onlineradiobox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.